Hi everyone, this is Neil Wright at here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. I have here a patient who attended with bilateral fully occluding earwax, and I'm commencing with this their left ear first. As you can see, this wax is quite dark, so it's been there for a while, it's oxidised. Um, freshly secreted wax is more of a, a, an orangey, uh, uh, light brown colour, and as the wax matures, uh, it ages and it oxidises, and it gets darker in colour. Um, you can compare it to an apple or an avocado if you like. Uh, if you slice into it, um, it, once it gets exposed to oxygen, it oxidises and it turns black. So this patient's entrance of the ear canal is quite hairy, as you can see, um, but they're not causing me a problem. Um, so for that reason, we're not going to trim them or pluck them away. It's only very seldom that I've had to remove hairs, and that's when there's absolutely no visibility in the ear. I know for people watching it for entertainment value that this hairs sometimes can get in the way but uh, this is a, if you, uh, a medical healthcare pr uh, procedure so as long as it's not affecting me doing my work we, we leave well alone. If we start trimming these hairs for example uh, some of these will fly, fly in the ear. Um, you can put some cotton wool in there but the patient has got wax already so you can potentially uh, further impact the wax. Uh, in addition, some of these hairs will go into the environment. Um, so being a clinical space, we don't really want that. Um, I just went in with the right correct there. Um, and you may have seen what happened was that this wax got smeared against the base of the ear canal. Now, you may see it's slightly wobbly, the view, and it's just because this patient wasn't the most steadiest. Uh, they were very anxious, actually. Um, they've had earwax removed before. It's the first time with myself. Um, and so sometimes keeping patients still can be tricky, but um, the longer the procedure went on, the, the calmer the patient became. Um, so it was less of an issue. And on that occasion, I managed to get a bit more out with the, the right correct, but still a substantial amount there. Uh, the ear hook itself would just, just dissect it through this. It wasn't firm enough. And similarly with forceps, it's just the plug wasn't firm enough. So I'm just trying to get over, behind, and then slowly extract forwards. You can see it's coming out. I think it comes out in a big plug, which we'll see in a moment. Is that a bit later on? We shall see. So again, at the bottom, it's just smeared it slightly, but eventually I do remove it with the right correct it does come out in a big big piece i'm just going to lift this off the floor of the ear canal because it has smeared slightly so when you've got a consistency of wax like this when you're sometimes using a correct it's almost like spreading it um, it's like when you uh, apply jam on your toast sorry if anyone's watching this while i was having their breakfast so i managed to lift it off the floor of the ear canal i've just angled the wax so the, the first bend is an S shape, a sigmoid shape. So I've just orientated the wax so the tip of the surface of the wax is facing towards the entrance. <coughs> I've gone back in with the right correct and I managed to drag this out in a big, big piece. Sorry guys, I don't think I took a still image. Sometimes in clinic it's just um, so busy and um, you're finishing off with one patient and then you've got to do the clinical notes, you've got to wipe down, read the next patient's notes and it's just unfortunate I don't get time. If I do get time, I, I do try and uh, take some um, still images but on this occasion I wasn't able to. So the left ear was successfully treated, we're now moving on to the right side. Again they've got these hairs protruding from the um, from the surface of the first bend of the ear canal which is the cartilaginous portion. Uh, the cartilaginous portion of the ear canal is about one third. Uh, it's made up of cartilage at its, at its base and on top of that you've got uh, a layer of skin with the three distinct layers. You've got the subcutaneous layer, which contains um, uh, connective tissue and insulating fat. You've got the dermis layer, which is the, the middle layer, which is where these hair follicles for these hair strands are located. Um, there are also erector muscles that connect to these hair strands, which allow them to protrude outwards. Um, connected at the follicle itself, you've got the sebaceous glands, which secrete sebum, which is an oily lipid secretion, also secreted on our scalp. And then you've also got sebaceous glands, uh, sorry, you've got modified sweat glands called apocrine glands, 
which secrete an oily sweat, and they kind of have their own micropores to the surface of the ear canal. And you've also got um, collagen and um, elastin found in the dermis layer. And then last but not least, you've got the epidermis layer made up of epithelial skin cells. Um, these skin cells, the epithelial layer, it sits at the surface, it's a protective barrier, it helps to regulate the internal skin moisture, so it helps to um, avoid moisture within the dermis layer and sublayers from rising to the surface and evaporating. And that's because the outermost layer of the epidermis skin is, is filled with keratin. So keratin is a protein also found in our hair strands and fingernails, and it's hydrophobic. So it helps retain internal moisture whilst also repelling external moisture because we don't want external moisture um, from penetrating the deep layers of skin. And this epidermis layer uh, extends all the way to the eardrum. So the, the inner two thirds, the osseous part of the ear canal and the eardrum only ha is lined with the uh, epidermis layer of skin. It doesn't have the dermis or subcutaneous insulating fat layer. So I'm going to use the right correct now. Uh, we're going to be careful because we are now going on to the bony part of the ear canal. So this is where the design of the right correct really comes in handy because you can see it's arced, it's curved, and that mimics the curvature of the ear canal which therefore minimises friction. I've just lifted it enough there. I'm now going to go to the anterior canal also. Well, I'm going to go to the superior, but I'm pretty sure I'm also going to use the right correct on the front section of the ear canal to see if I can leverage some of the wax there. So you can see it's quite soft and mushy. It's not firm. It's quite dense, but it's soft dense rather than a hard dense. It's very thick mud. It's got that uh, consistency, very clay type. So, now, I usually wouldn't use uh, a Jobson Horner correct in this manner on the bony part, unless I really have to, but with the right correct, I'm a bit more confident to glide across the, the bony part, if necessary, but it's not always necessary, try and avoid it if possible. So we've got the, the more lateral wax out near the entrance, so this is the posterior canal wall just past the first bend, and quite often wax and get trapped in this part so I've just gone in with the correct just scooping underneath it and just separating that from the canal so there's a few hairs there matted I'm just going to suction this bit away it's just got trapped at the entrance So I've just instilled some medical grade olive oil spray. So the reason why we use medical grade olive oil um, is because it goes through um, a number of additional processes which ensure that there's no bacteria um, in the oil itself. So a lot of people I know they use home olive oil, um, but because we're using it for a healthcare medical procedure, I much prefer to use medical grade olive oil is far less likely to develop any reaction or um, introduce any unwanted mm. bacteria into the ear as a result. So I'm just trying to tease this away. Um, try not to embed the suction probe because otherwise you just risk blocking it. So I'm just kissing the surface and slowly just, you can see, tugging it away from the canal wall. It's just a bit blurry because there's a bit of oil there. So just come out. I'm going to try and get the endoscope around the hairs to, to avoid smearing. Now, do try and mop up those hairs with oil after we instill it. But invariably, it's going to coat the shaft of the hair. So and when you've got really protruding hairs like this, there's always a chance of them um, smearing the lens of the endoscope as you enter. So on that, far, that last entry, you may have seen I went... I try to go further around the hairs. So this is lodged in the isthmus. So the isthmus is a narrowing towards the eardrum. So the ear canal narrows, then it widens and it creates a recess, a valley, if you like, at the base where you can see I'm getting it out from the bottom of the ear canal and also to the front of the ear canal, to the right. The earwax is lodged there. So whenever you see earwax lodged like this, you kind of you make the assumption anyway that this patient's been using some sort of Q-tip, cotton bud or... 
they could be a hearing aid wearer or wear ear defenders or sweet um, swim or um, sleep plugs it's been pushed it's been lodged we can see the uh, posterior quadrant of the eardrum in view that's the blue tinge and you've got the annulus which is a fibrocartilage and that annulus region um, just adjacent to the blue tinge on the left it helps to stretch that part of the eardrum to keep it really um, tensed and taut so when sound hits the eardrum it really does vibrate if the eardrum in the, the main body of the eardrum wasn't taut and you've got sound waves hitting it well it's not going to vibrate so that eardrum needs to be really stretched I managed to leverage that away so again I'm going to try and curl around those hairs there's the patient's eardrum it's nice and healthy we've got the cone of light reflex there it should be visible around four o'clock which it is in the case of the right ear anyway bit of sticky wax we could have really left that but i'm just going to hover over it comes away brilliant if not i'm not too concerned but well, the reason why i'm trying to remove more and more in this region the inferior re uh, part of the ear canal because you're just more and more recently i've uncovered some pathologies on this um like b a b9 osteonecrosis where there's um, decaying of the underlying bone which then creates a dip in the ear canal a pothole or where well, still a canal cholesterol tone, which is very rare, but it's when um, s uh, skin that's yet to shed, uh, it, it collects some part of the ear canal and it builds into a plug and it then releases uh, proteolytic enzymes, which then can ulcerate the skin, lead to periosteitis, which is an infection of the periosteum, which supplies the blood and nerves to the bone of the ear canal and it then eventually leads to bone decay. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.